Hello friends, in this video we will be taking a look at the autosomal DNA results, predicted phenotype traits and GD match results of a Bronze Age individual from uh, Vierteba cave in western Ukraine. Let's begin with this video. Here's what she is predicted to look like. Maina Shakotu is predicting her to have hazel color eyes and brown hair and either Greek or snub shaped nose, so undetermined nose shape. Uh, when it comes to eye shape prediction, her eye shape prediction is actually very South Asian, uh, but that's not South Asian eye shape is not really any different from Northern European or Middle Eastern eye shape, so it's kind of all the same. And for hair shape prediction, she's predicted to have straight hair. She has BH1, blue eye haplotype 1, she's heterozygous for blue eye haplotype 2 and 3, and she does not have BH4. So having heterozygous genotype for BH2 and 3 is probably the reason she's got hazel eyes and uh, intermediate pigmentation of eyes and hair. Moving on to GED match, this is what she scores with Eurogene's K13 on GED match. Uh, this result looks kind of similar to what you would see like a um, Sintashta scoring, maybe not Andronovo because Andronovo would have more West Asian and South Asian, but this does look similar to like Sintashta or Fatianovo. Uh, with the Oracle, she's closest to South Poles, followed by Ukrainians from Belgorod, uh, which is actually on the border with Russia, and she's getting modeled as a mixture of Southwest Finnish plus people from the Caucasus, or Swedish plus people from the Caucasus. Um, this is what she scores with MDLPK11. As you can see, a lot of... Um, Caucasus admixture, 36% Caucasus plus, additionally 6.6% around Mesolithic. Um, a lot of Caucasus admixture here, and with the Oracle, she's closest to Corridor from Germany, followed by Srubnaya. I'm not really sure what exactly she is. Is she Corridor? Um, is she Srubnaya? Well, she's obviously called Corridor, but is she Srubnaya? Is she um, some kind of really Western Andronovo? It's really hard to tell. This is what she scores with Pandiana LK16. K, uh, well, she can, she can be Andronovo, right? Because the the location doesn't match, but like, what is she? Um, this is what she scored with Pandiana LK16, and with the Oracle, she's closest to Kazakhs uh, from Kuban, which is in the south of Russia, followed by Belarusians and Russians, and she's actually getting more as a mixture of Finnish plus people from Dagestan, um, or Latvian plus people from Dagestan, around two-thirds Finnish plus one-third uh, Dagestan admixture. Uh, this is what she scores with Harappa World. As you can see, she's scoring a lot of Baloch, 20.6% uh, Baloch component. Uh, this is kind of the West Asian component that was present in um, Yamnaya, followed by Kored Wares and Srubnaya, all these people. Um, they all have a lot of Baloch component that's maybe not present in modern Europeans so much. Um, with the Oracle, she's closest to Mardvins and Ukrainians, and she's actually getting modeled as a mixture of Lithuanian plus Makrani or Brahui, so a mixture of Lithuanian plus uh, South Central Asian. This is what she scores with Pondiana LK12. Um, once again, you can see a lot of Caucasus admixture, Caucasus hunter gather admixture, but there's also 17.8% Anatolia Neolithic farmers, so this is not a Yamna individual. And with the Oracle, she's actually closest to Andronovo here, which absolutely baffles me why she's so close to Andronovo. And why is she getting more as a mixture? Well, I can see Srubne. She could be Srubne, but uh, why is she more Yamne shifted than Srubne? Why is she getting more as a mixture of 64% Srubne plus 30, 34 Yamne? Why is she more Yamne admixture than Srubne? That's really difficult to explain. Uh, this is what she scores with Pandiana LK10, mostly Caucasus on together admixture. And she's closest to Mardavins, followed by Ukrainians, followed by Russians with the Oracle here, pretty high distances. And with the mixed mode oracle, she's getting mold once again as a mixture of Lithuanian plus Lesgin or Estonian plus Lesgin. And Lesgins are a group of people in Dagestan in the northeast of Caucasus. Um, this is what she scores with ancient Eurasia K6. A very typical result for corded wear or any kind of like Indo Europeans from Eastern Europe. Um, and with the Oracle, she's closest actually to Step Middle Late Bronze Age, which is Sintashta. And uh, she's obviously pretty close to Sintashta and Andronova with all of these calculators. Uh, this is what she scores with Gidrosia K3. Um, as you can see, pretty white. She doesn't really have any like East Eurasian admixture aside from what was present in Yamne. And well, this is what she scores with G25. I really want to show you this G25 to sort of clear the air, and it's really difficult even here to understand what's really going on, because she's close to quartered wear from Czechia and um, Germany, but uh, line of number three is Srubne, once again, why she's pretty close to Srubne, she's pretty close to various Kokcha BAs and Dronovo, actually, so she's close to quartered wear, but she's also close to Srubne and Andronovo, uh, and with the Oracle, um, I tried to model her as a mixture of various groups, she seems to get, be getting modeled as a mixture of Srubne, uh, Catacomb, plus corded wear individuals from Eastern Europe. 
Now we're gonna look at her traits with my genome analyzer tool. Let's start with, um, uh, where is she? She's here. Okay. And we're gonna enter her name. We're gonna enter um, Vert. Right. So she's got AA in Komtsval met variation, which actually means met met genotype. It's a pretty rare genotype, and it's a super European genotype to have. Basically, she's a warrior in Komt, and would you look at that? She's actually a warrior in MAOA. So these two are conflicting genotypes. She's got less of the Komt enzyme, but more of the MAOA enzyme. Both of these enzymes are um, controlling. Are are both of these enzymes are responsible in the reuptake of dopamine. So if you have more of the comet or more of the MAOA enzyme, you got quicker dopamine reuptake, which means less dopamine in the system. So she's got less of the comet enzyme, but more of the MAOA enzyme. And uh, she's got two derived no-go learning variants in the 2 spirofrenzine pro variation, which causes a significant reduction in the number of dopamine D2 receptor sites in the brain and reduction in the risk of schizophrenia. Once again, this is a super European genotype to have, extremely European genotype to have. Uh, she's got GG in TAC1, which is pretty typical for like any human. Uh, basically, it means she does not have the A1 allele, which uh, reduces, greatly reduces the availability of dopamine D2 receptor sites in the brain. Um, what about 5-HTTLPR? Okay, so, so she has short form 5-HTTLPR, just like all you guys. She's got short form 5-HTTLPR, slightly higher odds of depression. Um, does not carry the European lactose persistence mutation. And, well, she's not genotype for this variation for empathy, so we're going to ignore everything else. It's all kind of irrelevant uh, compared to this one variation. So for diabetes, she's got CC here, which leads to sevenfold decrease in the risk of type 1 diabetes. Does not have type 1 diabetes. Um, okay, for hemochromatosis, does not carry this. Uh, does not carry any risk variance here. Well, this one is the... These two, this one and this one, are the most important... Uh, variations for hemochromatosis. For Alzheimer's, she doesn't have, well, she's not genotyped for any of these two, which are the most important variations for Alzheimer's, so we can't really say. For myopia, uh, she does not have the G allele here, which protects against myopia, so she's got slightly higher odds of myopia and nearsightedness. Um, for miscellaneous section, no micro P, no micro P, you know what that is. Uh, you've been watching me for a while now, you know what I call micro P, but if you haven't been watching me for a while, if this is the first video you see on my channel, uh, micro P is, well, it's this, you know, I just can't pronounce it because of the monetization. So for drug response, um, higher odds of methamphetamine induced psychosis, greater odds of um, cannabis induced psychosis, okay, interesting. Um, for a typical traits panel, what about this, does not carry albinism type 2, not a carrier, not a carrier, not a carrier. Not a carrier. So she doesn't have any of the albinism mutations. And she's also not a carrier of Melanesian blonde hair variants. And she's also got this genotype here, which leads to decreased uh, risk of cleft lip and palate. So she does not have cleft lip or palate. Um, so she's pretty typical in her appearance and traits. Now let's see polygenic risk scores. So for polygenic risk scores, she's got basically four times less the odds of schizophrenia that was typical for uh, that was typical for uh, northern Europeans. So if 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 0.4 percent of northern Europeans have schizophrenia, then there is a 0.1 percent chance of her having this illness. That's how you have to interpret this result and understand it. Um, she's got a significantly higher odds of diabetes, and she's got average odds of Alzheimer's. Why is the odds for diabetes so high? Um, well, you know. In the calculation here, there's a couple um, there's a couple variations that are not on the screen that that are playing a role in this calculation right here. So just because you look at the panel and you see that you don't really have any risk variance for diabetes does not mean you don't have any of the other ones that are not showing up on the panel, right? So that's probably the case with her. That's why her score for diabetes is so high. Um, that's pretty much all there is to it. Thanks for watching my video until the end. Uh, leave a like and subscribe if you enjoyed it. You can download this file in 23andMe format from link which is in the description. Goodbye.